Hey guys, welcome to Analytics Vidya. In this video, we are going to build a code explainer AI tool powered by the free Google Palm API. As the name suggests, our code explainer tool will take a Python code snippet as input and provide a detailed step-by-step -step explanation as output. It will basically help break down the complex Python code into simpler, human-readable explanations, making it easier for everyone to understand and learn from. In last week's video, we have already explained how you may get your Palm API key uh, for free from the Google's Makersuit platform. Do watch uh, that particular video and follow the steps. The link to the video is in the description. And hey, do subscribe to our channel to see more of our Generative AI content on YouTube. Your support keeps us motivated to bring uh, more of these weekly learning videos for you. Now, without further ado, let's jump right into the Python hands-on. All right, guys, this is the code file that we are going to review for uh, building our code explainer tool. Right on top, I have kept this uh, link for you to check if Palm API is available in your specific country. Uh, just click on it and uh, it will give you the entire list. Here you go. Right now, I'm based out of India and yes, India is there. Then as first step, let's set up the environment. For this, we install this library called uh, Google Generative AI. Let's do that. It's asking to restart the runtime. I'll do that too. Thereafter, we are importing Palm from this uh, Google Generative uh, AI library along with the OS module, which is a standard module of Python. At this point, I assume that you would already have your Palm API key with you, uh, just in case if you don't, I have kept this uh, uh, link for you so that you can get it done now. So going back within this uh, code cell, you may replace this particular uh, text with your particular key. Let me do that as well. All right, I have updated my key within this cell and now I'll just run it. And once you have configured your uh, API key, uh, post that if you wish to know the specific version of the Palm 2 model you are accessing via the API, we have this next code cell to do just that. As you may see, we are accessing the Bison version of the Palm 2 model. Just so you know guys, Palm 2 model is available in four different sizes, from smallest to largest being Jekko, Otter, Bison and Unicorn. And uh, we are getting to access Bison, which is the second largest uh, Palm 2 model which is available. Again, for your further reading, this is a link I have kept uh, where you can read more about the models which are available. All right, now we are all set to query Palm 2 model via our API key. Uh, here's a simple chatbot that uh, will help us uh, to do just that. Over here, we are using the generate text method of the Palm module for uh, prompting the model beneath the API. Uh, these are the parameters we are passing. Uh, model is model, prompt is uh, this. Why is the sky blue? I have written one more example, which is why, what is quantum computing? Explain like I am five. So both of these will try out. And as third parameter, we are passing temperature equal to zero. As you would know, temperature, if it is set to zero, uh, the model will give us more deterministic results. And if we set it to one, then model results will be randomized, right? It, there will be more creativity, so to speak, in the response. As last parameter, we are saying max out output tokens equal to 100. It means that the maximum length of response is uh, restricted to 100. Now for this prompt, why is the sky blue? Let's run it. And as you can see, we got a response from the Palm 2 model that the sky is blue because of a phenomena called Rayleigh scattering. So sounds like a, a reasonable response. And this also validates that the API key that we have configured above is working. Now at this point, let's move on to our custom use case, which is Code Explainer AI tool. To begin with, uh, to make things a little bit easier for us later on, we define this uh, get completion function, helper function, that takes a prompt as input and returns the Palm model's response uh, to the given prompt as output. Let's initialize this. If you take a look closely, it's the same line of code that we used above. We are using the same generate text method from the Palm uh, module. So now comes the time when we have to write a prompt that uh, effectively conveys our requirement to the large language model, thereby uh, leading to better results. To demonstrate this part to you, I have broken down the prompt writing part for our uh, code explainer into two parts. In part one, we'll uh, write a simpler version of our prompt and see what happens. So this is the part where we'll do that. And thereafter, in part two, we'll try to improvise on our understanding of part one, All right? Now, let's look at uh, part one over here. First up, I'm putting this uh, Python code snippet that I want to be explained. Uh, this is the one. So over here, there is this list X having five elements. And then Y is again a list wherein I'm picking elements from X that are divisible by two, that is even numbers, and then I'm taking a square of those numbers. So essentially, Y should be a, a list having two elements, four and 16. Let's see, I can just quickly run it for you. Yeah, so this is what we are getting. Now let's see what our language model will respond to this. Right, so basically this is the input code that will be submitting to the language model for explanation. And I'll initialize this. 
and then we write the uh, short prompt uh, explaining the instruction exactly what we want to do uh, so our prompt says your task is to act as a python code explainer i'll give you a code snippet your job is to explain the code snippet step by step also compute the final output of the code code snippet is shared below delimited with triple backticks and if you have followed uh, uh, some best practices for uh, prompt writing or prompt engineering so to speak uh, you would know by now that uh, whenever you are inputting your specific information within your prompt it makes sense that you put it within some separator that you are defining within your prompt right for example i'm putting this input code over here i'm sort of uh, putting it between these three backticks and i'm explicitly telling the model uh, that this is what i'm doing and that way uh, the prompt is more structured and gives fair bit of clarity to the language model to act upon right now if i initialize this one this print statement will show us the final prompt so this is how it looks now let's move on to the competition part uh, using our uh, get completion helper function i'll run this one and as you can see our uh, language model has uh, understood the requirement and thereafter it has given the correct output to us now let's try out a different uh, code snippet this time around so i'll put this one in comment and this time around i'll use this code snippet that will be feeding to the language model so over here uh, we are defining this function called my func this function takes uh, one parameter x if the value of x is more than five uh, it returns high and if it is less then it returns low and thereafter we are calling my func three times passing it four six and four and uh, expectedly the result should be low high and then low you know based on the numbers being more than five less than five just for our understanding let's try running it once to see what the exact output is so it's low high low now we'll be feeding this particular code snippet to the language model again i'll initialize the prompt so this is how our updated prompt looks like and now let's get a response on this so the function part i think our language model understood uh, correctly that if x is greater than five uh, it returns high and if it is less it returns low but then in the computation part the final output which the model is predicting is incorrect now, as you may see, the simpler version of our prompt clearly has limited effectiveness. Uh, what do you think uh, we may do to make it more effective? Well, there is this whole branch of prompt engineering that gives us multiple cues on how we may write prompts that elicit desired results from generative models. So in this effective prompting section, what we are going to do is to provide a few good examples of what we essentially need the language model to do. So I've written these couple of examples of how I want the language model to comprehend and solve my requirements. Uh, so these are those examples. This is example number one, code snippet, the correct answer and the explanation. So very structured information for the model to consume. And uh, this is the example number two. Again, the code snippet, the correct answer and the explanation. I'll just initialize this. Then again, uh, we have these uh, code snippets in this next cell. Uh, intentionally, this first code snippet, I kept the same from the uh, simple code explainer uh, part, part one that is and uh, then i have one more example that we can try right so i'll initialize this code as well now if you look closely at this prompt i made uh, slight uh, changes to the prompt as well this time around my prompt is like this uh, your task is to act as a python code explainer i'll give you a code snippet your job is to explain the code snippet step by step break down the code into as many steps as possible share intermediate checkpoints along with results this line is essentially telling the large language model to take it slow right to take a breather and to basically slow things down right and uh, thereafter i'm saying uh, state your steps and uh, checkpoints in your output and uh, thereafter i'm saying that a few good examples of python code output are provided between this separator and then between the separator i'm sort of uh, mentioning the uh, text that i have declared above and then the code snippet uh, I'm sort of mentioning. Now, let me just in initialize this prompt. So now this particular version of our prompt is more uh, explanative, right? We are uh, being more detailed and clear simultaneously in uh, letting the language model know that this is the requirement that we have and to give us the specific output as needed. Now let's run the get completion prompt on this. So this is what we get this time around. Now, as you may see, uh, because of uh, breaking the entire uh, process down into steps and checkpoints, uh, the final output that language model is giving us looks more structured to start with, right? And also, uh, the language model is uh, developing a structured step-by-step -step understanding to solve this problem for us. And just because of that, we see that this time around, the final output predicted by the language model is actually correct. 
Now, uh, I have also kept one more uh, code snippet. What I would want is uh, for you to try out uh, the other code snippet uh, on your end and let me know in the comment section uh, whether the model is giving you uh, the expected result, desired result, or uh, if there is a problem, then how did you go about solving it, right? And now when we have a fully functional uh, code explainer, Python code with us, next part is to give it a clean looking front end so that it actually looks like an app rather than just being uh, the boring looking code. To do that, I'm using Gradio, which gives a beautiful web interface to any machine learning model or uh, gen AI application for that matter. Gradio is an open source Python library that is used to build uh, machine learning uh, and data science demos and uh, web applications. To get started with uh, Gradio, first of all, we need to install it. This is the code I've written for uh, building our uh, code explainer app uh, with Gradio. Uh, I'll do a separate standalone video on Gradio where uh, we'll build an app from scratch line by line. Right now, I'll just give you a quick overview of uh, what's happening over here. So within the uh, Gradio app uh, code, first of all, we are importing all the dependencies. Thereafter, I am declaring the Palm API key. In your case, you may just replace it with the key. I'll also do that in a minute. And post that, similar to the way uh, we did above, I am defining this get completion uh, helper function and I'm passing a single argument to this. This time around, I'm just giving the code snippet, remaining everything I'm defining within the helper function itself. So these Python code examples are defined within the function. The prompt is written within the function and only thing that uh, I would require as an external input would be the code snippet that will come over here, right? And post that, uh, again, I'm calling the generate text uh, method from the Palm module, passing all of these parameters, which are familiar to us by now. And thereafter, we are uh, returning the response from the language model. And in terms of uh, the Gradio app, uh, I'm uh, building a Gradio interface I'm calling it iFace. Within the interface, uh, I am defining my helper function, which is getCompletion. I'm defining my input, which is uh, the code snippet. And in terms of output, I'm uh, declaring that there is only one output and uh, the label I'm putting is explanation here. And the title of this app would be Python Code Explainer. And as last line of code, I'm saying iFace.launch. So this will basically launch the app within this uh, collab notebook. And with a share equal to true, uh, we'll also get a shareable link uh, on which you can access this uh, code explainer tool for around 72 hours. So Gradio allows you to share your work with uh, uh, friends and family so that they may also look at uh, the work you have done. All right, so now our app is in front of us. What I can also do is uh, I can also open this uh, link so that we get a whole view, full view of our app as a standalone uh, tab. Now as a practice uh, code, let me pick the one that I gave you as homework <laughs> and let's see how our model performs on this. This one. Now I'll paste the code snippet here and let's see what happens. And as we can see, we are getting the right result, which is 15. So guys, this code explainer was just one of the many ideas of AI tools you may build using the free Palm API. Uh, here are some more example ideas I have kept for you. First one is a text summarizer or a book summarizer. In fact, we have done a, a whole video on this particular problem statement where we uh, built a text summarizer using the BARD API, again, coming from Google. Secondly, building a mock interviewer. Uh, secondly, you may build a mock interviewer, uh, a chatbot that takes a mock interview for a specific job role provided as input by the user. Uh, you may work on an AI teacher, uh, a teacher that knows it all. You may ask whatever you want to ask and you may get an age appropriate uh, response. And finally, a code reviewer. The tool that we built in this particular video was a code explainer. You may also uh, ask the language model to perform the role of a uh, debugger for you, right? All right, guys, that's all I had for you in this video. The code explainer tool that we built still has tons of scope for improvement. Like our current version is Python specific code explainer. Can you think about how to make it programming language agnostic? In that case, do you need to provide more code examples of those other programming languages? These are some of the questions I leave you with to brainstorm and experiment. Again, do subscribe to our channel if you haven't so far. 
I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.